And thank all those people online and wherever they are that they are making lots of comments in the videos and in the video feeds on YouTube, on social media, they're posting and doing everything possible to post and to spread the teachings. So alhamdulillah so to address everyone and bless everyone for the immense efforts and trying to ask questions and, and to clarify and to get a greater understanding of the way to take notes and to study the path and to make it a, a real path of realities, not just a entertainment uh, for a few hours inshaAllah. What do we got for questions for tonight inshaAllah? As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah When battling the nafs it begins to get really confusing when to defend ourselves versus when to stay quiet. Is there any time where we should respond or should we not? InshaAllah that in most cases when the nafs is under attack is recommended to stay silent. That the more we can stay silent at the moment of the attack the less the nafs is going to enter. So everything is going to have its own example. So there is no one cure for every disease and for every sickness. But in a general state if somebody is arguing with you the one whom has the ability to remain silent is absorbing, listening to everything being said and trying to calm themselves down so that any reply should be at a time where you're not angry because then it's not your nafs, it's a logic and reason entering in. But as soon as you allow the nafs to enter into discussion or to debate and to a rebuttal, if sense and logic and patience has gone and pride and anger enter, it's a full-fledged battle of the egos. So again for every situation there's going to be a, a warning to it. The propagation of lies against a public figure like a shaykh or a teacher then they have to reply. It's not something they can stay silent. Silence in itself would deem something of a reality. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. that that's true. So you'll see at times that students kind of lose their mind and begin to post horrific things. So there are some things that have to re be replied to and they don't try to engage the nafs of people but to send out a, an understanding and a, in a sense from peace and from calmness. So again every situation has its own remedy but in general the one whom engages quickly back and is quick on their tongue and quick on their feet that then can lead itself to very nafsani situations and that's the danger. If we can catch that and realize, oh I'm gonna get angry right now and we have many talks on that subject, it's like a chess game. Most of the situations if you live your life like a chess game you know when you're going to get hit with one of those situations. So there's a relative's house that you're gonna visit. And it always happens there or there's a group of people you know that when you sit with them that's going to happen. So then you can't, you know the rule for insanity is you keep doing the same thing but you expect a different result. If every day I cross the street and this truck hits me 
at some point you say, I'm not going to cross the street here anymore. But if you keep doing it and saying, I don't understand why that truck is hitting me every day then they say, maybe you're insane. So you're trying not to do that. So this situation is that, oh I know when I go to this place, these people, this situation comes. So then it's advised the student of the path then to remain silent knowing that situation or avoid situations that can become very nafsani and, and very egotistic because again a student of the path understands that there's lights that we carry and these lights agitate you know demonic beings. If you go amongst relatives and friends and, and people whom are doing inappropriate things and drugs and alcohol, the demons that occupy them don't appreciate the light of a believer because they want the person that they've occupied to remain within darkness. So you have to imagine yourself that when you're doing spiritual practices it's like you bring a light into a room of darkness. Well, those beings that encourage somebody to drink and to harm themselves with drugs and alcohol and all of these different uh, vices, they don't appreciate spiritual people entering into that room and illuminating the heart and souls. So again you're conscious of where you go that that light's going to agitate dark forces and dark energies. So we limit ourselves and exposure to people whom we know are engaging in, in darkness and, and bad character. And uh, the light and the darkness they don't get uh, along and the truth and falsehood they don't get along. And falsehood by its nature is always perishing and stands, it has nothing to stand on and hold itself. As a result then it perishes in the face of that light and, and that illumination, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaykum as Please forgive my lack of understanding and bad adab. Could you please expand on the accountability and responsibility that falls upon the student after listening to these haqqaiqs? Is it the same for the last chapter and goals we write to manifest? Thank you for everything. Yeah, I think that yeah, everything that we hear we're accountable for. So Allah will hold us to account. You know that they say ignorance is bliss to a certain point. One who wants to be complete jihad and ignorant, they, they remain ignorant and they can sit in a closet and live their life accordingly but doesn't mean that Allah won't punish them, it means they achieve nothing. But the one whom their soul has a yearning to achieve and to regain a status, you know lofty souls or high level souls that came upon this earth, they came with an intention that they would use this earth as a means in which to achieve their realities and to achieve what Allah has given to them of an opportunity. So they require to feed on these realities, to, to uh, attain these realities. So as a result of Allah guiding them then they're now responsible. So you can't say that, I didn't know, and they said, no you were taught. Your eyes are recording and your ears are recording and the one whom wishes to lie to Allah and say, no I didn't know Ya Rabbi, Allah will play back their recorder for them. That here your eyes will testify, your ears will testify to what they heard and what you saw. So you heard this reality, you saw this reality, you allowed your nafs not to want to do it, not to follow it. And that's when the teaching comes back, well who's sitting on the chair? That's a part of the meditation. So that when I don't do something and I don't listen to the teachings and I'm not writing and taking notes and uh, I'm not following that level of guidance then I have to f go back and meditate and who's sitting on the chair at that time? My nafs is sitting on the chair and then I have to identify, well every time my nafs sits on the chair he doesn't like to listen to any of the teachings. So then I can say, oh well that, that, that seems to be a greater part of the day my nafs is sitting on the chair because the, the sickness is when you don't know that you're sick, right? Because people think they're good. And they're generally saying, well I'm really good because look at all my friends are really bad. 
But that's not the, the litmus, that's not the test of being good. That if you're, all your friends are gangsters and you're not doesn't make you good, it just means that you're trying to move away from being a gangster. Goodness is towards looking to the heavens and say that they're good and I'm trying to imitate them and move towards their reality and use them as a curve. And that's why we have the example of Sayyidina Muhammad So we don't compare ourselves lower but we compare ourselves with the highest and say, I have to move towards that reality and as a result and then I do my accounting. So I see how much my nafs is on my chair and doesn't let me to learn, doesn't let me to study, doesn't let me to think about, don't let me to achieve. Then I understand, okay this is my sickness, that's why the shaykh gives these zikrs. That's why the grand shaykhs have put together recitations and etiquettes. Recite those awrads, why? Because they are medicine. For every sickness Allah has given a medicine, those are like pills. Every zikr that you do, SubhanAllah, Bahamdi, SubhanAllah, Adheema, Astaghfirullah, each one of those is a medicine against a sickness. Astaghfirullah al Adheem, Astaghfirullah al Adheem, Astaghfirullah al Adheem again is a medicine against immense sickness and it heats that chair where the chair becomes so hot shaitan has to get off. Zahana can sit there and the, if you find yourself able to sit and do your awrat means shaitan's not sitting on the chair otherwise he would never let you to recite that. When you say, I can't even pray means shaitan is so fiercely on your chair he won't let you to make prostration, that's not good, that's a dangerous sign. So that's when you know, when you do your awrat shaitan is off and if you can do it a lot your nafs is also going to be burning on that chair. So that's the importance of you know taking a hisab, taking an accounting of oneself and trying to achieve a, a greater state of consciousness and reality at every moment and not to be just content with one thing but to continuously try to grow. And that's why then review the subjects that we've talked about, there are so many. Uh, when Mahdi replays the videos after a few weeks or four months some people think it's like new. Like it was amazing, why? Because the first time around they didn't catch it. And, and if they're not really studying it and writing it, yeah of course they don't catch it because there's just too much information coming out three times a week. So when you watch the video again is again another opportunity to write your notes. Not that I already heard that talk, no but you may be in four weeks or four months at a much higher state in which now you can comprehend the real jewelry or gems that are coming through them. So the talks for most people just seem to be like rocks, just passing through. Because in, in life if you really knew that they were gold you would have stopped and wrote everything because everything has an immense secret in your reality to achieve eternal stations, it's not something small. So but because we're dunya people, if I told you go to this stream and all of a sudden you look down and there's like all these diamonds and rubies and emeralds, you would build a camp, you would live there and you would take everything from this stream and be the wealthiest person on earth. Nobody would pass that up and say, oh well that's very nice, interesting, great and then go because we don't understand the value of the teachings and the realities. They're just flowing like rocks for people, just flowing, flowing. Did they catch that? Did they understand that? Did they write that, that gem? Because how do you pick up a gem from the spiritual reality as you write it? How are you going to pick up a gem? What does that mean to pick up a gem? Is that means you wrote something of a haqqaiq and later on you go back and, and look at what you wrote and you begin to meditate and contemplate on it and you begin to write a little bit more of the understanding of, aha uh -huh, I think I understand what this means for me. And then that gem begins to enrich the soul. So that's the system in which the shaykhs were taught, the holy companions their, their gems are what? Is their companionship. That they accompanied the Prophet of Islam they absorbed the realities, they wrote these realities, many of them and as a result they became immense gems of realities because not only they got dressed by the power of hearing the voice of Sayyidina Muhammad which there are no, no, no two that can match that. 
means to hear the physical voice of Prophet was a, a most honoured gift and that's what makes the holy companions to be honoured. So means these are because of the frequency, the realities and the realities of what was being conveyed and from what presence was it being conveyed. So that, that's immense. So many people in their lives they don't understand the presence of even the holy hair of Prophet They just look at it and walk by as if like any other hair, say, no this hair was at Qawbba Qawsaini aw Adana because any hair from the hair of Prophet was in the presence of Allah in which no creation will achieve, not an angel, not a jinn, not anyone, not a prophet of Islam, not, not a prophet of any other religion can achieve what the prophet of Islam, what the prophet Sayyidina Muhammad achieved with physicality. So it means all the physicality went into the presence of Qawb Qawsini to bone lengths or near. What is that? What was that? And how it witnessed Allah. If you understood that then you say, okay the hair that you have of Prophet witnessed Allah was in the presence of Allah That's why the no mind people that come against relics, what do they have? They have like no, nothing in their head. Why aren't they understanding that if it's Allah you love, how and who got the closest to Allah Sayyidina Muhammad Just for that sake alone if you really loved Allah you draw near to those relics because it went into the presence, he went into the presence of Allah So you see people are warped, they, they're so excited about a stone that was somewhere in paradise. But in Medina you have the actual flesh the blood and the body and the being of Sayyidina Muhammad that stood in the presence of Allah Beyond any station that Sayyidina Jibreel could ever achieve, he went and saw what his Lord wanted him to see. Doesn't that mean that every drop and DNA of it was dressed by Allah to an extent that nothing has been dressed like that. So he is a relic from Allah's relics. As we try to collect relics on earth that Sayyidina Muhammad's personality is Allah's relic because he brought him to his presence, sent him back down to earth. So he's dressed with the Divinely dress and Divinely lights. Anyone draws near to the Muhammadun Rasulullah has drawn the nearest that you can achieve to Allah just by the sense of his understanding of tabarak and relic, that he is a relic from the relics of Allah Other nations they're trying to find a box of a tablet that Allah with a, an energy they wrote on a mountain the Ten Commandments, not Allah's hand because its spe speech was from Sayyidina Muhammad But those tablets that manifest into a physicality, they're hoping to grab that box and conquer the earth. And their entire belief is to move the whole world into war to find that. And then with their belief they'll make their wars based on that for a stone that didn't even get near to Allah but just contains the words of Allah not even written by Allah What do you think about the presence of Prophet who went into the presence of Allah with all his DNA and all his cells every part of his wujud is dressed by Qawbba Qawsaini wa Adana. Anyone who goes to Medina is being dressed by the presence of Allah by virtue of the miraj. But because shaitan deceives the nation they don't sit and think, my gosh we do have it. Those same people that claim to think they love Allah they come against these relics but you should realize he is a relic of Allah Allah gave us a Divinely relic that I brought this into my presence and I send it back to you. If you get near to him you're near to me. The nearest that anything in creation can achieve and nothing in creation has achieved that, not an angel. 
Because Sayyidina Jibreel of the Archangel said, we don't go there, that's where we don't exist. It's only for you Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, Ya Habib al -Azim. So these are all the immense gifts that Prophet has given to us. Do we sit and understand its value and meditate and contemplate? Then we would understand the jewels, the difficulties in life we have, they can be cured by these knowledges, these realities and to be a custodian of these knowledges in this way inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam If you realize that Satan and nafs are the ones switching places on your chair, what should you do? What you're supposed to do, do all your practices. You're supposed to know that your shaitan is on your chair all the time, 90% of the time, that's the whole talk. You meditate, contemplate that shaitan is there, that's why I just explained that you're supposed to do your awrads, your zikrs, all of your practices to burn them. Most people not doing their awrad, you ask them, do you keep who do this and no? Do you do your awrad, your recitations on a daily basis and no? So do you understand then you're content with shaitan sitting on your chair, say, yeah. What, what can you do at that time? So when Allah send punishment on a person, who's He punishing? Well you're not sitting on the chair, your soul's not sitting on the chair, so why are you worried about punishment? Your shaitan and nafs is going to be punished. So before Allah punishes because you're all going to get hurt because three of you are sitting in the same room. So you do your zikrs, you do your practices, you, you do your charity, you do your, your khidmat and service, why? So that the chair becomes so heated, shaitan won't sit there, has a difficult time. And then the nafs is gonna have a very difficult time, that's all the practices. That's why you get the meditation book, the energy book. You have to do those practices so that you understand that chair becomes heated. Those who don't want, which is now 99% of population, then what happens in last days? Last days there's a tremendous amount of qadab, divine anger entering the earth. Why? Because he is not happy, Allah is not happy with shaitan and nafs on the chairs of people. He said, this is a, a noble creation and those who know the realities, I created you with a Muhammadan light as a vessel to carry realities that are above the angels if you achieve. This is not a seat that you can make dirty with Satan and your nafs. As a result Allah sending punishment in the last days and as a result punishment of the grave, why? To clean the seat, to clean the station. This is God's immense rahmah and mercy for if He doesn't clean the seat means you have lost all access to that possibility because you lost the chair in this world, you lost the authority and the ability to achieve that authority. But Divine Grace is actually saying, no I'm going to then clean you in the grave. I'm going to clean everybody on this earth with sicknesses and difficulties and, and towards the last days becomes Divine angers, wars and punishments, why? To clean the chair. Well anyone with a little bit of sharpness will say, I'll clean it myself, I don't need that Ya Rabbi, please. I'm going to do my zikrs, I'm going to do my practices, I'm going to wash, I'm going to pray, I'm going to do the things to clean my chair and cast shaitan out. And I'm going to cast my nafs out as much as possible so that I can sit back upon the chair with the soul and the reality of the soul, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, I'm a new convert and since the day of bayah, nafs and shaitan try to lead me astray. Sorry my English is not good, I'm learning. I make the prayers, watch the videos, um, do the meditation. I connect with Sayyidina Hajja Amina but I feel powerless and very, very tired. Is this normal? Definitely. Anytime that you, you're trying to come against shaitan and the whole satanic system that for 30 or 40 years has been built within our lives that is going to try to deplete our energy. 
that the nafs puts on the brakes and makes everything to be difficult. So it, it's a big fight, it's a big fight against the nafs. That's why you do the zikrs and make your istighfar, astaghfirullah azeem wa tubu alayk. You know from the beginning of the day to the mid-afternoon you say, astaghfirullah azeem wa tubu alayk, astaghfirullah azeem wa tubu alayk and making and asking for istighfar. And after the middle of the day then make salawats, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad salim. So these salawats are on the app and all of these are on the app, you recite them on a daily basis. Keep yourself in your ritual washing and, and wudu so that your energy is being shielded from every type of negativity and know that any great battle is going to be tough, especially if you train in fighting. You should know that uh, fighting is never something easy. So anyone who enters into fighting should understand that if a fight is never easy. And do you think a fight with a devil would be easy? No. So anybody who understands the last days is, is warfare. So great wars are coming upon the earth. This is the beginning of spiritual warfare. So you know any, any type of fight is not easy. So spiritual fighting with devils and, and nafs are not easy but God's grace is very powerful. If you do the practices, keep the wudu and that's why we said meditate for asking for madad. As soon as you meditate and contemplate asking that their madad be with you, their energy to be with you, their nazar to be with you so that that energy of support begins to come and to help and to bring God's grace and, and the, the bounty of Allah with all of God's servants to be surrounding us with their energies and their powers and their grace, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, since Allah is the holder of all provisions, should we ignore any consequences to us giving? Is it allowed to borrow, to give, knowing that we can pay it back? Yeah. That's the <coughs> You want to give from what you received so that like a tax upon what has been given to you. Not to indebt yourself and give that which is not yours to give. So yeah you have a situation somebody give in one place they go downstairs and, and borrow from another place. So you, <laughs> you can't do… yeah the objective that you're trying to achieve is to understand your sense of faith that and it's the analogy is like a plate of food. If it was just all you had in this world is this plate of food and God sends you this pizza, cheese pizza and that's it, that's all you have as a provision. Do you eat the whole pizza in your logic? And there's one other guy next to you and your teacher next to you, what do you do with that pizza? You eat it by yourself? then you seem to be a very greedy person in your mentality, no sense of a consciousness. This is then the benefit of Ramadan. Or the tariqah and the, and the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad is to look at this pizza I have and to think about who else doesn't have. So this one other person they don't have and then I have a responsibility to my teacher and as a result then I divide my provision. That I say, I'm going to share my food with my brother because how can I eat and he's sitting and not eating food. So I'm going to give a percentage of my provision, what we call zakat is a alms or charity, sadaqah. That if it's a smaller provision on a daily basis I'm going to give. If I got a pizza just one time that year it's a zakat, that from that I have to give from it. And at the same time my shaykh is next to me who's teaching me, guiding me, he's not asking for anything but they say, I just got this wonderful pizza, here's a slice for you. How could I eat where you're not… you're just staring at me and, and you're teaching to me so I'm entertaining, it's, it's nice for me. So it's just common sense that here's a slice for you, here's a slice for you. And what God wanted was that to have that consciousness, there's nothing that's just mine. 
I'm merely trying to earn the rank of being a custodian for God's wealth. If you achieve that, God sends you more. This guy's it's pretty, pretty good with this stuff. We'll send him two, three pizzas. Then he says, well I can only eat three slices, so let me take my three slices, give a slice to my teacher and now here's a whole bunch of stuff now for these people who don't have food. And that becomes Islam. Islam means that we submit that Allah is the owner of my home, my provision, my children, my entire life He owns it. I'm merely asking to be and to regain my status like a manager. That I'm not saying it's mine and it's not his, I'm saying, no, everything be owned, owned by Allah Malik al-Mulk. He's the mulk, he's the king of the, he's the malik of all, of all mulk. I'm merely his custodian. If you do your custodianship good, the flow will flow to the servant. But if the person enters in and steals all the silverware, then God doesn't trust them again. Says, mm, this one seems to like everything you sent him, steal it. So that's not going to happen. It has to be then, it's all very sort of commonsensical. Don't make it difficult. What you got, there has to be shared. Then God sends you a lot more. But if you'd say, oh, I got these, now I'm going to put these 50 pizzas in the freezer because maybe I won't have pizza tomorrow. Why? The one who sent you these 50, he, well, well, all of a sudden your faith went that he's going to send you no more? Unless you're like you, you became a, a renegade and against the faith, even those 50 you save Allah will send somebody to steal them if that's your concern. But you say, no I'm still a good person, so why you start freezing 50 pieces for? Same system, eat what you got, put a little bit aside for you and then put the rest, uh, give it. Isn't going anywhere. So then that was the sense of faith and read from Taskiyatul Awliya how everything was just flowing and flowing and that's why the tariqahs have an abundance of flow because of the barakah of the practices, their belief system, the entire practice system that they have is immense flowings of blessings and that they can feed. Look we got these vans and how many hundreds of thousands of pounds of food are being fed now in, in five or six different locations and cities where they weren't flowing before. But as soon as you start to do these practices Allah shows the bounty of tariqah that I'll fill the truck up so much that you don't even have enough volunteers to drive and pick up at another location. Hundreds of thousands of pounds of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of food. Very expensive foods that if you try to buy yourself, not possible. Well that's Allah's bounty and He's saying, what? why is it going to dry up? Why are you worried about your provision drying up? But you have to have this whole system of what comes in and this has to be distributed. If you're trustworthy, the next level Allah will increase. And again watch again that you're distributing, you're distributing, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum as salaam wa Thank you for your teachings. Thank you. Uh, if our soul is not perfected, we still make many mistakes but soul hear hearing begins to open. It comes and goes. Should we consider what's heard or should we ignore it? Should we consider what's heard? That the, the soul's hearing is that you're going to hear a sense of consciousness. So you're going to clarify what you hear on your consciousness that when you meditate and this only can open if you have a strong connection with the shaykh. If you're hearing without the connection of a shaykh means you're whispering and your waswas is playing with you. So since you can't see that's very dangerous, never listen to those types of things. If you're not based on the system we've taught where you're strong connection with the shaykh, you feel the presence of the shaykh, you feel yourself vanishing and the presence of the shaykh appearing, then, then you understand that when something is being inspired within your heart towards worshipness, I'm supposed to be worshipping more, I'm supposed to sit in this meditation more, I'm supposed to do this spiritual practice more. 
That's the only listening that you listen to. But when the ego gets in, it's like, oh, I want this, I want this person, I want this money, I want this job, oh, it becomes all material and dunya. That's not an inspiration, that's not the listening, that's just the nafs now saying, oh look this guy doesn't know what he's doing and I'm going to start talking into his ear. Your friend, yeah they don't know what they're doing, oh the neighbor they're doing this in the backyard wrong, then this person is praying wrong and shaitan is now whispering everything into your ear and make you go out and, and tell people, fight people, try to expose people. No, that's not the tariqah. So these are very sensitive delicate issues, that's why you get the meditation book and the understanding of meditation is the foundation. So if you take pieces of what we say and not the whole, you can become fasiq and corrupt and that's very dangerous, right? So you say, oh Shaykh I heard about all that uh, teaching and hearing and hearing ayah and I hear all these guides coming and talking to me and teaching me and saying this and to do that and to do this. But you left out the part of connecting to your shaykh and to your guide because that becomes the, the, the great purifier. When you have a connection with your shaykh, he's clearing out any residue of a false connection. So the shaykh that you know you're connecting with, you hear him, you have access to his email if something's going wacky in what you think, you have to clarify. You saw I'm thinking all these dunya things so that's wrong, don't do that. You don't act on it, oh it came to me uh, like this, it came to me every type of hallucination. No, that's why you have the physical guide, you can't have a guide who passed away. You have a physical guide to ask, these are the coordinates I'm thinking or understanding, is my nafs playing with me? Say, of course you're not playing with you. So your connection is I'm nothing, I'm nothing and Visualizing the power of the shaykh, I'm only asking for energy, you feel energy coming, you feel yourself heating up, you feel yourself vanishing and it's a tremendous amount of energy, you feel yourself crying all the time because there's energy and the soul's energy coming. So these are very specific, get the meditation book and begin to read page by page by page, two and a half years of questions and answers and it's all there. So we have to you know follow the system inshaAllah so that we can achieve the maximum benefit and avoid hallucinating and then letting devils come into the ears and, and whispering and devils playing with the eyes because you're entering into the realm of unseen. That's why you take the hand of the guide and you enter in through that door. If you leave the guide behind you're entering through a door you don't even can't imagine what's on that other side. And that's a, very dangerous, that's why the new age system doesn't work, their Enneagram system is a lie. Enneagram is based on the shaykh, these are nine sultan and awliyas that have to take you through their system of perfection to make you a star. They're not nine psychological states in which you can achieve by yourself, you can't even achieve one state by yourself, more or less going through nine psychological states by yourself. Yeah. InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum uh, Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam. I'm a little hesitant while asking this question but my heart inspired me to ask. Sayyidi I was watching your video in which you were mentioning Maqam al Ihsan where Qur'an is like Ummul Kitab. Sayyidi how to get on this level? <laughs> yeah, nice, uh, nice, nice question and, and uh, I think your soul was sitting on the chair wondering if it should even ask that question, yes. <laughs> so that, that's good and then the nafs took over and typed it. So that, that's how you know who's sitting on the chair. Yeah that, those are things you know when we talk about these realities, these are a reality set for us to understand the greater Muhammadan reality. So that your soul has a yaqeen and certainty against the teachings of shaitan that this was a normal man, Allah forbid, he came delivered a message and went. And now we have the book of Allah and our relationship is with Allah 
So that's the teachings, reality comes into the heart of, uh, of people from awliya, from the heart of Prophet Wasallam's haqqaiqs is, no, 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 it's not that at all. So there's an immense reality. What they're reading is Furqan and these are the three states of the holy book, right and wrong. They didn't get the codes from Qur'an and only when you accepted La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam, a spark enters into the heart, the Qur'an will read through your eyes, right? What's in your heart will reflect into your eyes. The letters of the Qur'an read your eyes so it scans you. If you thought your phone can scan you from a bunch of people in Asia making that technology, what about the one who made those people from Asia? The technology is superior from the heavens, the Qur'an is looking in your eye, looking at your optics, feels your hand when you touch the book, reads the sensors from all of your, your, your thumb print, everything and reads your eyes. Everything of the Qur'an is alive but not yet even created, means every huruf has an angel. All of it is, is emanating power, all of it is reading. If it sees the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah now the reality of Qur'an is opening. That the Furqan mixed with the Arabic messenger is opening the way of Qur'an. But then the Ummul Kitab means then the reality is within the fountainhead. You know the waterfall when it flows but at the point all the way at the top of the water flow in the heart that emanating these realities in the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah is the fountainhead of all realities where this waterfall is flowing from what we call Manzil Qur'an, the heart of Holy Qur'an. Well how you, do you get to there so that we can enjoy that scenery is by being a huge ashiqeen, right? In which you love Prophet more than you love yourself. So you have to take your soul into the heart of Prophet which you can't enter in, only Prophet can invite you in. By what? Your durud sharif, your salawats, your service, your khidmat, everything that was dear to Prophet do what was dear so that you can achieve a dearness to Sayyidina Muhammad right? So what's khidmat, service, loyalty, all that he expected of his companions you do to your teacher. He expected of his companions to fight, you fight yourself. He expected of his companions to be generous, to, to follow the example. What they learned they had to enact a hundred percent. And he told the holy companions, if you leave 10% of what I'm telling you now, you enter into Jahannam. In the last days there'll be people who only follow 10% and they enter into paradise, <laughs> right? Because it's just too hard and people's nafses are too strong. But the holy companions, what were they doing? They followed everything, everything. They were walking examples of the immense reality and that love. So that, that's something that's immense as a result, they have an immensely high station with a, immense love. If you walked a certain way around a rock they immediately copied that entire system. Not only because they copied it but they could see the light of the footprints of Prophet So for the adab of that reality the Ottomans kept the dirt and the dirt roads of Medina to remain from the soil that Prophet walked on, right? But the people whom came they didn't have these manners and this belief and they put marble on everything. So now you can no longer see the, the dirt because that was dirt and soil in which Prophet was walking. Its light would be emanating as beams of light everywhere. They didn't have that belief and they threw stones on everything and covered it. But their levels of faith prior to us then were immense, immense levels of faith. So we, we by love are asking that Prophet to look at us and gaze upon us 
Ishvalana, unzur halana wa ishvalana that please look upon me, look upon me, that's then the whole service of tariqah. So that's all the talks and all the teachings. That's why we do what we do, that's why we show up and, and, and suit up and, and do our service and live a life of showing our service, showing our loyalty, showing our dedication, making comments. Don't sit in, sit as a hidden potato, hidden somewhere in this universe nobody knows if you're watching or not. You want the nazar of Prophet and make a comment. Support the system, support the websites, take the articles, put them on to Facebook. Let your known, your name and your social profile in heaven be known so that people in heaven are like, who's that? Not who is that but that, that, look at that, we know who this person is, they're everywhere, they're on every social media profile. The dunya is going to do it now, they're going to have a social index based on if they like you or not and if you're going to eat or not. The shaitan is copying the system from the heavens. But the heavens is the more important one to worry about. That's hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel. Make sure Allah's good with you, don't worry about shaitans. So that's the whole system. That's why we do what we do, that's why we're active, we support, we go out, we, we do khidmat. You don't have to go on social media but you can share it, you can share the articles, you can go out and give food and you can learn and study. And the, the greatest way is to do dawah and dawah is so much easier than now going out and trying to hand books before we would have to make cassettes of Shaykh Nazim's talks, Mawlana's talks and we would go and hand them out, hand them out, hand them out because you have to do dawah. So our life is about dawah but Allah made dawah very easy. Make a, a, an account under SMC so it's not you on social media putting your face and having people direct message you and, and trying to, to talk inappropriately with you. You put a, an account under SMC, Muhammadan way, whatever you can think, Muhammadan love, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad noble names so that you behave correctly and as a result you start posting and doing dawah, posting articles, posting article, post the article on the uh, charity, post the, the water wells, the Ramadan, post the article on this, take the short videos. And every life and everyone has to do dawah, if one person comes from your posting and accepts Islam or comes into this way, imagine the, the gift that you have. We said before now our people are posting all over Spanish forums and I'm seeing all these Spanish names are coming in, alhamdulillah post it and, and those people should now go back out and start posting back into Spanish and, and, and Latin American forums, Russian forums, uh, Urdu we have, India we have, uh, English and whatever language else we can think of and that's, that's our life is dawah. That's all the shaykh is doing so copy what your shaykh is doing. We didn't inherit anything where everyone just comes to us because of our inheritance. We had to work for what we have and as a result the system that we learned is the system that we're told to teach, right? If you go to somebody else and they just inherit everything they want to give the same system that like you're going to inherit everything, don't do anything. But no, our system wasn't inherited, our system was we worked for 30 years to do this and as a result Prophet found favour with it and said, tell your other people to do the same because they're not going to inherit anything either. You have to work for it, you have to go out and post and, and dawah and teach and, and all of these realities, give food, give service, uh, be of service. So alhamdulillah for 30 years we're doing that. Inshaallah. As salaamu Shaykh. Wa alaykum as salaam. Can you please explain the nine awliya of perfection? <laughs> Someday, inshaAllah. <laughs> there are nine, And these are in the nine states and nine sultanul awliyas and they are in charge of star formation, turning people into stars, right? Where Prophet is a star maker and said that any of my companions you follow they're like a najm, they're like stars in heavens on dark nights guiding, any one of them will guide you. 
Because Prophet ﷺ's reality is the annihilator like the black hole that makes everything into a star. And he put for this earth nine Sultanul Awliyas and their position like in a circle. That if a student enters into that association under their nazar by their khidmat, their service and you got their attention means then they'll bring that soul into that system and begin to teach them. We have on YouTube the, the videos because it's very detailed and long topics and on Nur Muhammad, you go to Nur Muhammad and the nine Sultan and awliya are nine points. And the shaykh at, at point one, the shaykh at point two and the reality of shaykh at one. The shaykh at position one teaches tawheed and La ilaha illallah and that to come into tawheed and the reality haqqaiq of tawheed throughout your life and every everything to do with your life. And then keep going all the way around to the ninth and the reality of the nine. This system of these 12 months is based on that position of the ninth shaykh in the reality and the haqqaiq of the sultan. So these realities and this way of teaching is based on the sultan and awliya. So if it's not under the permission of that ninth shaykh this way of marifah can't be understood because this is all based on the nine not the one, the two or the four. It's based on the system of the nine where you enter in on Bab Tawbah, you enter in then to Surat Al Kahf, then you enter in to Surat Al Najm, not the Naml 27, and then 36, and 45, and then 54. So that's based on that system of the Sultan and Awliya and the, the, the gate of nine. But when the student is achieving these realities, then each of these shaykhs' nazars are perfecting their belief system and their understanding and their haqqaiqs and making them into a najm which is a Divinely star that shines and ishraqiyoon when they become like suns because the sun is a star. In the last days the ones whom are under this teachings they become ishraqiyoon. Although how they can become a star if they didn't even teach them anything of these realities, right? If they're not being taught these realities and they think they're going to become ishraqiyoon, by what grace they're going to become ishraqiyoon when they don't even know what a star is, what the light of Prophet is, what is the reality of these realities. So it's you have to be enrolled in these courses for ishraqiyoon to, to manifest. And ishraqiyoon manifest from the west because they become rising stars. As a result their uloom and their knowledges are of immense lights, immense realities of Prophet because that's the shams al-arifeen, that's the sun of all knowledges and the reality to achieve those knowledges. So it's very important to enter into these states, to enter into these knowledges, to, to, to rise, to be like suns upon the earth because we said the west, the east will be in darkness, right? They're having concerts out there, they're having rave out there, they're, every type of thing is now being banned, every religious thing is being banned, everything is, is being shut down. So means these ishraqiyoon will be located in the west and Allah is giving to their souls immense realities until they illuminate and set a light up. So the system of the sun rising from the west more important is what will be happening spiritually. So when the whole hemisphere and the system collapses where the actual sun will rise from the west but at that time it's tidal waves and earthquakes and shattering of everything. But prior to that the spiritual suns will rise from the west in which the illumination and knowledges and realities illuminate from the west and they shed their light upon the east. 
inshallah so these are opportunities for people in the west to study and that's in the book of the the guidance what's our book on the guidance with the big sun on the cover Any idea? Rising sun of the west, yeah. But if you study that, you'll understand that system that has to begin to take place. So that's an opportunity for people in the west, that's a, a, a destiny from Prophet People like it, they don't like it, doesn't matter because this is what Prophet destined. That the sun would rise from the west and uh, they don't care for dunya. So the spiritual understanding of it is more important. So those whom would be called to that reality then these are uh, ancient reality that Prophet is guiding them. And the ones in the east they can learn it because you won't find it in the east anymore because it's set. It's in darkness. If they try to talk about that in the east they get attacked and under attacked. Countries that were supposed to be religious are political. So you see that it's, it's becoming more and more ma maghrib and dark and maghrib and zulm. Darkness is like a oppression that when they become and enter into darkness they enter into oppression and oppressive characteristics. And in reality they come against and they are against Islam. So these are you know great opportunities for learning and to achieve a destiny that Allah has opened in this region. So alhamdulillah inshaAllah Allah include us all amongst those seeking that reality and the Muhammadan haqqaiq inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah Could you please explain the tree of certainty and its four branches? The tree of certainty and its four branches? That would require a bit more time inshaAllah, yeah, inshaAllah Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen illa sharif al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa sahbihi kiram qulam al shaykhina fi tariqat al ashbandiyat al aliyya wa sayyir wa sadatina wa sadaqeen al fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.